Hi everybody, welcome back to my studio. Uh, today we're going to be painting some more holiday cards. I thought this time we could paint some gingerbread houses and they're really fun. The fun part is decorating them just like you would if you were actually creating them from gingerbread, but we'll be doing it on paper instead. Um, but before I begin, I want to say um, thank you to everybody that liked my last video. I was totally not expecting any of that. It took me by surprise. And for everybody that subscribed and left a comment, uh, read every single comment, you guys are super sweet. And I'm so glad that you're all here. I really am. Um, and thank you for the subscribes. And it, it means a lot. Um, it inspires me to keep going uh, with creating content and with teaching. So um, I did want to let you know that I also teach on other platforms and I have a class that's getting ready to come out December 7th. And it is with um, Ivy Newport. I don't know if you're familiar with her or not, but I'll link, leave the link below in the description box so you can check it out. But I did want to give you a little bit of a, um, like a little synopsis of what the class is. It's called World of Watercolors, and it is a class that is broken up into about 13 little videos, and each of those little videos are like a mini lesson. And the whole idea behind the class was geared really towards people that are a little intimidated by watercolors, or they're beginners, or maybe they just want to refresh your skills. Uh, and it's to help you build not only your skills, but your confidence in watercolors so that you can um, you can kind of go off on your own. And if you want to paint something, you're not afraid to, you know, get your paint on the paper. So we'll be painting everything from landscapes to fruit to um, flowers and a bouquet. So if you think that that might be something you're interested in, I think there's an early bird special going on right now as far as the price goes. I will leave the link in the description box and hopefully I'll see you over there. Um, I also teach on Skillshare. I haven't put out any classes um, within the last few weeks, but if you want to check me out over there, if you're on that platform, um, yeah, definitely pop over there and say hi. And I think we're going to go ahead and start this class. But first, I wanted to formally introduce Maisie to you. She's in the studio with me today, as always, she's kind of my shadow. Um, and this is her favorite place to lay. <laughs> it's in front of the heater, so she's got the right idea, right? Um, so that's her, and she'll be hanging out with us today. And we'll be painting these gingerbread cards. So grab your paint, and let's get ready to create some gingerbread houses. Okay, so we are going to start this gingerbread house card by sketching in our little house. And you can decide what kind of house you want to do. If you want to make it a real tall skinny house or if you want it to be short. If you want the sides to kind of come in a little bit, totally up to you. Uh, we're going to start first by um, figuring out the center of our card. I know that my card is five inches wide, so I'm going to make some marks here at two and a half inches and get a little bit of a plumb line here going so that I can kind of base everything else off of that line. I'll be making my lines a little bit darker than, than you would. Um, make your lines light so that you don't have to do a lot of erasing. I'm making mine a little bit darker so that you can actually see them. Uh, now we need to decide where the ground is going to be. And I'm not going to be putting any wording on the front of my card. So I'm going to use all of this real estate here. So I don't need to leave a bunch of room. But I do know that I want a path going up to the front door. So I think I'll make my ground... somewhere around there and I need to decide now exactly how wide I want my house to be and I want to do one of those uh, like a real tall thin house narrow house I should say um, let's see so I'm going to do about an inch on each side that looks pretty good and 
so that my lines aren't completely wonky. I'm going to make a couple of little marks here. So now I need to decide where I want my woof. So I'm going to put the top of the roof right here. And I think I want the roof line to be about right here. So I'm going to make a little line and then I'll have the same angle on both sides. So I just line that dot up at the top. And where these two lines intersect here, pencil that in. Actually, I need to go a little bit longer so I can have a little bit of an overhang there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. We'll make this a little bit longer. And I want to give the roof um, some thickness. So I'm just going to make another line parallel to this about, a, I don't know, eighth, a quarter of an inch. Like that. And then you can decide how you want to end this roof line if you want it to be rounded or if you want to do just straight lines. I'm going to make mine rounded. Okay. Now we need to add in some of our windows and doors or door and windows and you can decide you know how you want to set those up. I'm going to do two windows up here a window here and the door over here and I think I want to do arched windows and an arched door actually I think I'm going to do an arched door and I'm going to do square windows so I'm going to eyeball this and draw a straight line here and I'm going to be kind of mindful of my distance pay attention to my distance where I'm starting and stopping the line so I can kind of mimic that over here without actually having to measure anything. So um, yeah, I'm all about the shortcuts. And I know I'm going to have a window on this side, so I'm going to make and I'm going to make this one down here. So I only have to do that one time. And I'll do the same thing over here. And I, I can make my, I guess I can make my door kind of line up with that window. So. And I'm getting these in kind of quick, so. Um, and all of those little lines that are running over will erase before we add in our paint. I'm going to make my door arched, so I'm just going to roughly sketch that top in and, and hopefully get that as symmetrical as I can.
We can add a little doorknob and I think I'm going to add some little crossbars here. I'm just going to make the indication of them so that when I get my white paint out, um, I'll have a little bit of a reference here. And I'm just very lightly going to pencil those in. And it's okay to do these, you know, some of these things being hand-drawn and not perfect because we don't want this card to look too stiff. This is a holiday card. This is nothing that's going to be hung up on the wall anywhere. So uh, we're doing this because it's fun. <laughs> doing it because it's fun and we want to create something. We don't want to take five hours to create it, but um, we definitely want to have some fun. This is part of the holiday season, being able to make something and gift it to somebody else. That's what it's supposed to be all about. So I'm going to leave it like that, and I may decide to add in some little ledges later, but if I do that, it's going to be with my white paint, and I'll just do that without a guide, and that'll be fine. So any other details can actually wait. Uh, we do need a chimney, though. And I think I'll add my chimney on the left side. that and this will read uh, like a gingerbread house once we get those details in we just need to get the setup right first and then we can start playing I think I want to add some trees in we're gonna do those little triangle trees I'm gonna make this one really tall over here and I'm just gonna add these dots in where the top of the tree is and I don't want to do a tall one, a small one, and another one because I don't I don't want that um, angle. So maybe maybe just a little bit bigger. And then we'll do this one over here. And I do want to add in a little bit of an indication of where um, of where this path will be. I'm going to get this line erased out first. So I want the path to start at the door, the width of the door, and just kind of get wider as it comes towards the front of the card. Just like that. So I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to roll it over this and lift up a lot of this graphite, especially this center line. I don't want that to be super obvious under the paint. And for all of the gingerbread, we're going to be using one color. We're going to be using burnt umber. So you won't have to mix anything. You can just go straight in. A puddle mixed up here and I'm going to add a little bit more and this is probably about 50 50 water to paint and I have been noticing that my paper has been drying super fast especially these cards so um, I'm going to work really quickly I'm working wet on dry paper and 
it seems to, by the time I get about a third of the way down, the top is already dry. Um, actually, you know what? I think since my paper is drying so quickly, I'm going to go ahead and pre-wet all of this. And that will buy me just a little bit more time. And we're going to paint right over everything. And I've got a little bit of pigment in my brush still. And that's fine. But this whole rectangle shape, I'm going to pre-wet. And I'm not going to go all the way out to the edge. I don't really need to. Um, but I want to get, you know, as, as much of a flat wash as I can. And like I said, this will just buy me a little bit more. A little bit more time. So I'm going to start at the roof line. And that's not wet. But the rest of the house is. And I'm going to add in my chimney there. And that will help keep the edge of my paint wet and not dry into a hard line while I'm getting the rest of this in because I want, now that I took the time to pencil all of that in with the ruler, I want these to be fairly straight. They're not going to be perfect, but If you don't get this bottom edge straight, don't worry about it because we're um, we're going to add some snow into the bottom, so that doesn't have to be perfect. Now, while this is still wet, I think it is still wet. Uh, I'm going to grab some of my Payne's Blue Gray and make. Um, I'm going to drop this in right underneath the roof line here, just for something extra. And that was already starting to dry. Wow. Okay, so if something like that happens, leave it alone. Um, best thing to do is dry it, which is what I'm going to do. And then I'll go back in and add another wash on top of that. Okay, this is dry. And I'm going to make a little bit of a darker darker brown just by mixing in some of this Payne's blue gray into my burnt umber and I'm I'm going to start at the roof line with this darker color and then I'm going to start picking up some of my um some of the just straight burnt umber and I'm going to start pulling this down through here And I'm going to work quickly because I did not pre-wet this. I'm working um, wet on dry. And I think this is um, problematic paper. Uh, these, And I don't think it's because it's um, like a watercolor card holiday kit thing or anything like that. I think that my paper, this Strathmore, these watercolor cards, I think they're just old. Um, and I think that's why I'm having some issues with the, um, with the paper. 
in my other tutorials where I'm working on uh, Arches watercolor paper, I don't have this issue. Okay, so that's pretty good of a fix. I'm not going to mess with that. She says, going in one more time, I'm going to very lightly try to blend this edge out. And let's just leave that alone. All right, so I'm going to go in here with the, uh, the burnt umber and I'm going to do the trees. If you make a mistake like that, don't throw the card away. Do your best to work with it. And I guarantee you that once we start adding in the white gouache and all of these little details, you're not even going to see it anymore. You're even going to forget this part of the tutorial totally. If you get pooling down at the bottom, like this, always tap your brush off and then use the end of your brush to kind of soak up the excess paint. Like that. And we'll get this other tree painted in over here. Okay. So I can still see my door and my windows. And I want to add in this little bit of a path here. So I'm going to use some of this Payne's Blue Gray. Just a very light puddle of it. And I'm going to start where the door is. I'm going to just swipe back and forth with my brush like this. And if it gets a little dried out, that's fine. It creates a nice texture because we want this to be the, um, just kind of give the indication of some snow. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of water up here where the chimney is and I'm going to drop in I'm going to drop in some of this Payne's blue gray something like that okay now that this is painted. That's it. That's all we're going to do with brown paint. Uh, we're going to be using our um, white gouache and make sure that you've got a small detail brush if you're going to use the white gouache. And when this is dry, we'll come back and we'll start detailing everything out. Okay, so I have added a little bit of this white gouache on my palette. And whenever you work with gouache, it should be, at least this is what I, what I was told in school, it should be the consistency of melted ice cream. So you want to mix your gouache with some water. I have this little um, apple squirt bottle that I saved from something. I have no idea. Um, but it's nice because I can add the water in just by drops. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to load my brush up and I'm going to detail these trees over here on the left side first, simply because I'm right handed and I have a tendency to drag my hand through the paint sometimes. So I'm going to start with these two trees and then I'll work my way over to the house. So I'm going to get a nice point and I'm just going to start 
detailing these out. I'm going to start just make some little lines in here like bricks. And I think at the top, I'm going to add in, I'm going to fill in this top area like there is snow sitting on the top of this chimney. And before I start painting the rest of the house, something that I really wanted to do was to add a, um, a little bit of a glaze over the windows to indicate um, like a warm glow coming out of the gingerbread house and I'm a little bit apprehensive now after um, after applying this simply because it lifted the paint right off and um, I think I'm going to try it anyway and if it doesn't work it doesn't work um, so I am just like I said I'm going to make the assumption that my paper is old that these cards are old and hopefully your paper is not doing this um, but I'm going to very lightly go in with a um, watered down new gamboge which is a really nice warm yellow and I am just very lightly going to go in and add this glaze right on top of these windows like that and I'm not applying any pressure at all just very lightly going over this. And I know that I added in a little bit of a window here on the door. Very carefully going to. Okay. And hopefully that will, that will pop a little bit more once we get the white detailing in. So I'm just going to work and um, if there's something that I feel like I need to explain, uh, but I might speed this up a little bit too um, because this part is, is really, this is the fun part where the fun lies. Um, and I'm just going to start detailing this stuff out. Okay, so I have finished detailing that out and I got a little bit too heavy here with the gouache so I wet it and then I kind of blotted it out and added some different details. Um, so I'm going to take my bigger brush and if your gouache starts drying out obviously just add more water. Add a little bit of water at a time. So I want to add a little bit of snow to the base of these trees. And to the base of the house too. 
I'm just going to cover up this sketch line that I made over here. And I'll do the same thing to the base of this tree. I'm going to skip the door. I've got to keep the door clear. And now you can use acrylic to do the detailing on your house. You just won't be able to lift anything out if you make a mistake. And I'm going to probably go over this. Um, this layer of gouache one more time once it dries and I think I'm going to add a little bit of gouache uh, to some of these areas here um, along the edges I just want to kind of cut in a little bit with the white so that it looks like snow And my cards definitely have a yellow tint to them, and it's the color of the paper. So this white, um, I can actually see it against this um, paper. And I'm probably going to add another layer of gouache too. So I'm going to dry this, and I'm going to touch some things up, and that should complete our card. Okay, so I've dried this and I have erased a couple of my lines here and I added some more gouache at the bottom for snow and I beefed up the windows just a little bit. So you can see how one color of watercolor paint and some white gouache, we can create a fun little Christmas card. And you can, like I said, you can sit down and sketch a bunch of these out, paint in your burnt umber color, and then you can sit you know, with a little Posca pen or something, you don't have to use white gouache, but any sort of opaque paint uh, to get those details in there to make these fun little Christmas cards. So I hope you had fun and um, I'll be coming at you next week. I think we're going to do some really quick, cute watercolor gift tags. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time.